Allow me to present this video production from Fresco Podología Technical Department. Fresco Podología was founded in 1975 and ever since has been dedicated to the production and distribution of food care products. Currently, our silicones are used in over 35 countries in all continents. With this video, we want to accompany the professional in his her first steps in the use of Fresco silicones. It is worth taking into account that we are not trying to establish guidelines for the use of ortosis in the treatment of deformed feet. Instead, we want to demonstrate the different uses of silicones with the objective of professionals improving their service to customers. During the audiovisual presentation, we explain the different techniques of mixing and manipulation processes of fresco silicones. The professionals will, in this way, achieve maximum performance from each product which means less wastage and therefore greater savings. Before continuing, we strongly suggest that it is extremely important to practice with the material in order to gain confidence and experience. And remember, you will find more information about our products at our website at frescopodologia.com. Introduction to silicones. Two ways to make an orthosis. Within the Fresco silicone range, there are two types of silicon, both with different production methods. Silicon's bicomponent 1 plus 1, Dewar range, and polycondensation silicons using a catalyst. Using scales. Fresco recommends the use of scales for the following reasons. With experience and by using scales, you will know what quantity is necessary to make each type of orthosis. For example, 4 grams for a separator or 12 grams for a metatarsal protector. It is also very important to know the weight of the orthosis in order to know how much catalyst is to be used in each case. Once the orthosis is made, we advise that you note in the customer's file the quantity of silicon as well as the amount of catalyst used. Using scales also offers the following advantages. A saving in silicon, always using the right amount of silicon. Reduction of errors, knowing how much catalyst to use. And more professionalism. If a customer returns after a few months and asks for the same orthosis, on consulting his files, we will know exactly what silicon and catalyst to use, and how much. Choosing the hardness. Fresco silicones are divided into three large groups, soft, semi-soft and hard. According to the type of orthosis that is required, the correct type of silicon should be selected. Each one has a specific use, as follows. The soft silicones are the most popular among podiatrists. They're mainly used to make orthosis for comfort, to reduce pain and to relieve pressure when walking. The soft silicones are ideal for diabetic foot treatment especially the bland rosé and the bland nature, for geriatrics and for sedentary people with low levels of movement. Because they're soft and elastic, these silicones adapt perfectly to the foot, providing comfort. The semi-soft silicones are halfway between the hard ones and the soft. They're used for correction, to redistribute heavy pressure and therefore ease pain. The semi-soft silicones combine durability and comfort. The hard silicones are usually used to correct toe positioning or to relieve pressure on the soles of the feet due to excessive weight. They are ideal for children, young people and also for sportsmen and women. The semi-soft silicones such as the Fresco silicon and the Duo 10 and the hard silicones Duo 30, 1400 and Orthosil can be adjusted and finished using a micro motor. Emery boards or any other suitable type of sanding or grinding device can be used to smooth and adjust the orthosis. Due to the consistency of soft and liquid silicon, we do not recommend that you use a sanding device. Once you've decided on the hardness of the silicon, the next stage is the manufacture of the orthosis. Making the orthosis using two-part silicons, the Fresco Dewar range. The 1 plus 1 silicons are ideal for podiatrists that are new to silicon, as they're easy to manipulate. The following process can be used for the Duo 10 silicon as well as the Duo 30. A Duo silicon orthosis is made using the following three steps. Firstly, using the scales, weigh the required quantity of silicon. 
the same quantity of A and B is used. Then both A and B are mixed together until you achieve a paste with a uniform color. This process will take 30 to 45 seconds and is an essential part of the process as the final result will depend on it. The kneading must be carried out with energy in order to guarantee that both silicons A and B have been totally mixed. Once a uniform colour is achieved throughout the mixture, it must be kneaded and rolled into a compact ball. This is very important as it will avoid internal cracks in the orthosis. After shaping it into a ball, the mixture will be ready to be applied to the foot and be moulded into the desired shape. The moulding must always be carried out in soft and delicate movements so that the silicon is not excessively marked and no prints are left on the surface of the orthosis. Once the piece is moulded onto the foot, it must be left in place for three or four minutes so the silicon hardens, vulcanizes. For a perfect finish, we recommend rubbing the surface of the orthosis delicately with a moisturising cream while it dries, as this will remove any marks and prints and will give a soft and shiny finish. Once the silicon has hardened or vulcanized, remove it from the patient's foot and place it in a bag or box. It is advisable not to use the orthosis for 24 hours. Silicons with liquid or paste catalyst. Mixing technique in two phases with a liquid catalyst. Place your fingers in the silicon jar to moisten them before selecting the required quantity of silicon, in this case, bland rose, to make the orthosis. The quantity of silicon that is to be used is weighed on the scales, in this example, 5 grams. Kneading of the silicon is recommended just before adding the catalyst. This way the silicon will have a smooth texture before making the orthosis. It is then placed on the fingers and a small hollow is formed where the catalyst will be added. For a quantity of 5 grams, 5 drops of reactor will be used in two phases. Firstly, 2 drops of the catalyst will be added and the mixture will be mixed quickly and energetically for approximately 20 seconds achieving an even mixture in which the catalyst will have penetrated completely. Mixing must always be done with energy and using force with your fingers from the outside inwards. Please observe where the silicon is held in the fingers while it's being mixed. This is the optimum position. Another hollow is made in the silicon in order to add another two to three drops of the catalyst. It is mixed as in the previous phase quickly and energetically, although for less time since the catalyst added in the first phase will already be carrying out its function of hardening. As seen in dual silicon, the mixture is rolled into a ball. This will also help to control the silicon once it hardens. When the silicon has reached the required consistency, it is applied to the foot and is delicately formed into the desired shape. In this way, we have produced an extremely comfortable orthosis for the patient, especially in geriatric cases. After this process, you must wait eight or 10 minutes before the silicon acquires its maximum elasticity and sponginess. The mixing technique is based on adding the liquid catalyst in two phases, thus reducing the amount of catalyst needed, even though the amount of mixing time is increased in order to achieve the final elasticity and sponginess of the orthosis that is being made. It is very important to adhere to the recommended amount of catalyst and mixing times, taking into account that the more catalyst used, the less amount of working time and vice versa. Later on in this video, we will show some errors that can be made when mixing silicons. 
the following table shows approximate quantities of reactol needed for each weight of orthosis. Working with a paste catalyst. The paste catalyst is more concentrated and therefore vulcanizes rapidly. Because of this, you must be quite accurate with the quantity of catalyst used, otherwise the orthosis produced may break up. For this reason, the mixing process cannot be carried out in two phases as with the liquid catalyst. The silicon to be used is weighed, in this example 5 grams. In this case, a line of 2 cm of catalyst will be used in the center of this mixture. It is kneaded energetically and rapidly until the catalyst is well mixed and the color of the silicon is uniform. The rest of the catalyst left on your hands is mixed with the silicon. This process takes 20 to 30 seconds. As in previous cases, a ball is made before applying it to the foot and in order to avoid fissures later on and to control the silicon's hardness. Then use your hands to mold the orthosis to the required shape on the foot. Orthoses made with paste catalysts will always be somewhat softer than those made with a liquid catalyst. The following table gives the approximate amounts of paste catalyst necessary for each weight of orthosis. The paste catalyst is slower to set than the liquid catalyst. Therefore, it is recommended to use the minimum amounts of catalyst mentioned in the table and to allow more setting time in order to achieve a perfect result. An excessive amount may accelerate the process but could result in a more fragile orthosis. Tips and recommendations. When working with silicons, it's important to have all necessary material at hand, as once the process has begun, it cannot be interrupted. It is necessary that the spatula and other tools, such as the surface on which to work, are always perfectly clean. Silicon residue that could remain from a previous orthosis can be cleaned easily with the aid of silicon oil. The tools must always be rinsed with soapy water and dried. Regardless of the type of silicon used, it is important to learn the correct way of positioning your hands when making the ball and to identify the moment when the silicon begins to set because if you continue to mix after this point, the orthosis could fail. For a perfect finish, while the piece is hardening on the foot of the patient, the surface of the orthosis can be rubbed gently with some moisturizing cream. This will eliminate possible prints and will give a soft and shiny finish. It is important to remember that the more catalyst that is added, the less time there will be to make the orthosis. We recommend using less catalyst and to lengthen the working time. A mix of two types of silicon for semi-rigid orthosis. The fresco polycondensation silicons have the advantage of being able to be mixed together in order to obtain orthoses of intermediate hardness. In this example, bland rosé silicon and fresco silicon will be used. A combination of 50% of each silicon can be used or even different proportions depending on the final result that the professional wants to achieve. The desired amount of each silicon is taken and weighed on the scales. Both types are mixed together until you obtain a mixture with a uniform color. Only then the paste or liquid catalyst is added as required. 
In this example, liquid catalyst is used, which will be added in two phases. This example will be used to show that if a larger quantity of silicon is used, kneading can be done on a polypropylene sheet, which will allow for greater pressure to be put on the mixture. The rest of the process is as previously shown. An indentation is formed in the silicon to add two or three drops of the catalyst. Kneading is carried out as in the previous phase, rapidly and energetically, although in less time. Then a ball is made to mix the silicones. Moisturizing cream can be added on the surface of the sheet so that the silicon does not stick, making it easier to manipulate. Before applying to the foot, form a flat surface using the palm of your hand. The choice of which silicones to use will always be the decision of the professional and should be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. In this example, a metatarsal protector has been made. Finally, the difference in hardness acquired with the silicons can be seen. You can see how the hardness of the final orthosis varies when mixing the two silicons. In this example, having mixed 50% bland rosé and 50% fresco, you have an orthosis that has sure hardness of A10. The final hardness of the orthosis is not related to the amount of catalyst used since the hardness is a characteristic of the type of silicon used. However, when one has little experience in working with silicons, it is recommended to use a small amount of catalyst, which provides a longer molding time. Liquid silicons. Liquid silicons are used to repair orthoses or to add to orthoses that are already made. Fresco Porologia manufactures two different types of liquid silicons, the 11504 soft fluid silicon and polymer fluid silicon which is a rigid silicon. Due to its characteristics, this type of silicon must be worked with a spatula on a hard surface such as a polypropylene sheet measuring 20 by 30 centimeters. As liquid silicons are very sticky, it's important to have a container with diluted liquid soap to moisten your hands. This will allow you to manipulate the material with ease. Adding a support to an existing silicon orthosis using Blan Nature and 11504. In this example, Orthosil, a hard silicon, will be used to make a metatarsal protector. The amount of silicon to be used will be weighed. Reactol is used as the catalyst, and you can see that the orthosil silicon is worked on in the same way as the previous examples when using liquid reactol. That is, by adding the catalyst in two phases. Mixing is done rapidly and energetically. A hollow is formed in the silicon to add the catalyst. Further mixing is carried out again, rapidly and energetically, for 20 seconds. A ball is formed from the mixture. After flattening it, the mixture will be ready to apply to the foot and mold into the desired shape. Once the piece is finished, scissors will be used to cut an aperture providing a space to insert some softer silicon. The objective is to create an area which relieves pressure, where the foot will be supported on the harder silicon and where the area of pain will have a softer silicon support. The piece is now ready to apply the mix of liquid silicon 11504 and bland nature. The amount of 11504 that will be used is between 25 and 50 percent according to the amount of adhesiveness the mixture must have. The larger the amount of 11504 used, the more adhesive and more fluid the mixture will be. 
With the help of the spatula, the two silicons are mixed on the sheet to obtain an even texture. In this type of mix, we recommend using the liquid catalyst as it is easier to control the hardening of the mix. In this way, a smaller amount of catalyst will be needed and manipulation will be comfortable with no risk of accelerated hardening. Using less catalyst means more time to work on the silicon. This mixture is very sticky and in order to avoid it sticking excessively to your fingers and for you to be able to work comfortably with it, your fingers should be moistened with soapy water throughout the process. The liquid silicon mix is applied to the aperture on the harder silicon, producing an orthosis with two levels of hardness. To combine the edges and produce a fine texture, the surface can be rubbed with moisturizing cream once it has set. Once the process is finished, the difference between densities of the two different areas can be checked with a durometer. Repairing a worn orthosis with polymer and bland rosé. In this example, a worn orthosis is repaired with polymer. The same steps will be taken as in the previous example. Firstly, both silicons are combined with the polymer, making up 25 to 50% of the mixture. This percentage depends on the required adhesiveness of the final mix. With the aid of a spatula, the material is mixed on the sheet until an even texture is obtained. The liquid catalyst is then added and mixed using the spatula. Once the mixture is ready, it is applied to the worn area of the orthosis with a spatula or with your fingers previously moistened with soapy water. A sample test of the mixture that has been produced is left on the mixing sheet as a control to show when the silicon on the foot has hardened. Once it is set, the silicon on the foot can have its edges and any residue removed with scissors. You must remember to work with hands that have been moistened in cold soapy water in order to avoid the mix sticking excessively to your fingers. Adding to an orthosis. Repair of an orthosis with polymer and bland rosé. In this example, polymer and bland rosé will be used to repair an existing orthosis. With the help of a spatula, the silicons will be mixed on a sheet in order to obtain an even texture. The liquid catalyst will be added, and once the mix is ready, it will be introduced with a spatula onto the outer sides of the orthosis, moistening your hand with soapy water as many times as necessary in order to allow easy manipulation. For a perfect finish, we recommend rubbing the surface of the orthosis delicately with moisturizing cream as it will erase prints and give a soft and shiny finish. You must wait until the silicon has acquired a certain level of hardness and then it can be placed on the foot, then wrapped in cling film in order to achieve a more anatomical shape. 
A sample of the mixed silicon should be left on the sheet in order to observe the hardening process while the silicon is on the patient's foot. The result of the repair can be seen. The only thing left to do is to polish the edges of the silicon, producing the final required shape. Adding to an orthosis, adhering to the silicon using 11504 and bland rosé. 11504 and bland rosé are used with a liquid catalyst to give greater comfort to an area of excessive pressure on an orthosis that has already been produced with hard silicon. The procedures of mixing and control will be the same as those previously shown. Mixing rapidly and energetically, a ball is then made to bring the mixture together. In this example, we see how you can produce an orthosis with a different level of hardness in a specific area. Paste or liquid catalysts can be used, depending on the level of hardness that the professional wishes to obtain, although it is recommended to use a liquid catalyst in order to have greater control over the setting time. Once set, the edges and any unwanted silicon are trimmed away and the final shape is produced. Fresco silicons can also be mixed using lycra or tubular meshes in order to achieve orthoses with more consistency and greater comfort. Making an orthosis with 11504, polymer and a cotton tube. A tubular mesh is placed on the foot in order to judge how much is needed. The amount of silicon to be used is relative to the amount of tube needed to cover the desired area. For this project, it will be necessary to work on a polypropylene surface and with the aid of a spatula. In this example, the polymer will be mixed with 11504. With the aid of the spatula, the two silicons will be mixed on the sheet in order to obtain a uniform texture. The catalyst is added in proportion to the quantity of silicon. If little experience is had in making this type of orthosis, it is important to use a small amount of catalyst in order to have more time to manipulate and mold, even though the orthosis takes 10 to 15 minutes to set. This way the orthosis can be made without the risk of it hardening before the task is complete. Since the steps needed will take some time, mixing the silicon and the catalyst, fixing the silicon to the tube and fitting it onto the foot. Your fingers can be moistened as many times as necessary to allow you to fully mold the silicon. Shape is given to the orthosis and the foot is wrapped in cling film or a plastic bag. Once set, the surplus silicon should be cut away and the edges polished. Making a bunion protector with tubular gauze, bland rosé and 11504. The dimensions of the gauze needed to cover the bunion are calculated by placing it onto the foot and fixing it on with surgical tape such as micropore. The amount of bland rosé required is also calculated in relation to the size of the gauze. The quantity of silicon is weighed in order to know how much catalyst is needed.
With the aid of a spatula, the two silicons are mixed on a sheet in order to obtain a uniform texture. Your fingers can be moistened as much as necessary to allow you to easily mix the silicon. The mixture is then placed on the fingers and a hollow is formed to add the catalyst. Mixing is always done energetically and using force with your fingers from the outside inwards. Another indentation is made in the silicon to add another two to three drops of the catalyst. Kneading is done as in the previous phase, rapidly and energetically, although for less time. The mixture is rolled into a ball. The ball of silicon is flattened and placed in the tubular mesh, giving it shape. For a perfect finish, while the silicon sets, we recommend delicately rubbing the surface of the orthosis with moisturizing cream. This will erase any prints and give it a softer and shinier look. For this type of orthosis, leave it on the foot for 10 to 15 minutes. Common errors in the manipulation of silicon. If an excessive amount of catalyst is used and the silicon is mixed for too long, or if kneading is carried out incorrectly because not enough finger pressure is used, the mixture will harden quickly and you will not have enough time to mold it correctly onto the patient's foot. See the following two examples. When adding too much catalyst when making an orthosis and mixing with a small amount of time in the palm of your hand, it may be felt that the process is being accelerated and a successful orthosis will be made. However, the result is that the silicon has not acquired the desired hardness or elasticity. This occurs because the excessive amount of catalyst used can produce a separating effect on the silicon. Similarly, if the correct amount of catalyst is used, but mixing is carried out without energy and for a short period of time, the silicon will have neither consistency nor elasticity. It is very important to avoid inserting your hands covered with catalyst into the pot of silicon, as the catalyst will react and damage the silicon. Silicon must not be placed on the foot until it has acquired a certain level of hardness, as the walls of the orthosis would not be strong enough and consequently would become too thin due to the pressure that your fingers place on it. If you can see transparent areas on the wall of the orthosis, this indicates poor material consistency and the possibility of the orthosis breaking. Remember, wash your hands before and after making an orthosis. If you have high body temperature, it's recommended to wash your hands in cold water to lower your temperature. This way the adhesive qualities of the silicon are reduced. Use the correct amount of catalyst. It is better to not use enough than to exceed the amount required. Mix correctly using your fingers or on a polypropylene sheet always observing the advised mixing times. Always roll the mixture into a ball with the silicon. This will help to control its initial hardness. Once the silicon has been applied to the foot to begin molding, always proceed with soft, non-aggressive movements. Fresco recommends waiting 24 hours before wearing the orthosis for the first time, and before wearing it, wash it with cold soapy water. You will find more information on these and other products on our webpage www.frescopodologia.com